A very good evening, one and all. I, Dr. Nagashri, on behalf of uh, Aditya Bangalore Institute of Pharmacy, Education and Research, I heartily welcome our speaker for the day, Dr. A.V. Jaipal Reddy, sir, teachers, students, industry personnel, and others registered from various organizations. We welcome you for the webinar on the topic, Significance of Social Media in Pharmaceutical Industry. Before I hand over the session to the sir, so I just want to give a brief intro about sir before we start the session. So as you can uh, look on the screen, uh, there's a small uh, brief introduction for sir. Maybe it would have gone uh, for more than these pages. Uh, so it is a cut shortened version for the introduction part. So Dr. A.V. Jaipal Reddy, sir, uh, uh, is currently an associate vice president and the global head of biological uh, business uh, at Hetero Biopharma Limited. Uh, it is a subsidiary of Hetero Labs and which is one of, the ten, uh, one of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies in India. In current role, Sir is heading Hetero Biopharma's uh, global business with an aim to establish leadership of biosimilars in emerging markets and simultaneously enter developed and uh, regulated markets through strategic partners. Jaipala Sir is responsible for global strategy, business development, licensing and technology transfers project management, sales, marketing, medical, regulatory, and clinical affairs. As you can see, it's all uh, you know, related to the biosimilars in this position. So maybe uh, the introduction will be, you know, if I continue, it will take uh, 90 more minutes. So it's a short form, uh, we are having it here. Sir has completed a master's in pharmacy from Bangalore University in 1997, and he's an uh, alumni member of the prestigious Convent College of Pharmacy, Bangalore. And while he's working overseas, he has also completed his PGDM from Exidel International, uh, which is from the Pearson Group, United Kingdom in 2008. He also obtained PhD in Management Studies, International Business, with a research focused on digital strategies for pharma companies. He has around 23 years of diverse experience in the pharma industry with 18 years in international business and has traveled extensively over 80 countries and all regions across the globe. Then Jay Palasir was instrumental in setting up business operations of leading pharma companies from scratch and successfully managed various business models across global markets with many accomplishments and contribution to Indian pharmaceutical industry in global markets. Then he has uh, his area of expertise in pharma industry is very diverse like you can see from manufacturing, BD, RA, marketing, sales, retailing, distribution, and so on. Jaipala sir uh, was also instrumental in identifying countries with entry barriers to localize the products uh, by setting up a local manufacturing by identifying potential partners. He was a core member of the strategic group to set up local manufacturing, JVs in different regions of emerging markets and cl uh, worked closely with all cross-functional teams to handle both greenfield and brownfield projects. And having lived in Gulf region and Canada for around 10 years, Jepalasa returned back to India to an integral part of Indian pharma industry with a passion to increase the access of high quality Indian made pharmaceuticals to the needy patients around the world. In his previous assignments, he held in his previous assignments, he held key positions with leading global pharmaceutical companies like Dr. Reddy Labs, Arabindo Pharma, Strides, and Milan, and so on. From medical representative to the senior management personnel with the leading pharma companies, this journey was possible only because of sheer determination, passion, and hard work. Jepalasa has participated in both industrial and academic conferences exhibitions as a delegate, exhibitor, speaker, and panel member. He has published articles in leading journals, reviewed articles, and also on editorial board of leading journals. He's a strong believer of continuous learning, and uh, he keeps inspiring the students and colleagues through his passionate and interactive talks on various platforms. So with this intro, I would like to hand over the session to Sir to speak on significance of uh, social media in pharmaceutical industry. 
give us a minute so sir will take over the session uh, thank you madam namaste to all of you uh, so thanks for uh, giving a brief introduction about my profile uh, so again as i always believe it's an opportunity for me to interact with all the students you know because we learn a lot of things from students it's the other way that we also whatever that we know in the industry it's very important for us to share with the students so uh, with the industry perspective so what is required for us is it's uh, the students are uh, graduates coming out from the university with knowledge and the skills so because knowledge without skills is like it's very difficult again you know it takes long time uh, for an industry or a, for a company to train them again to put on a regular task so i think see today's uh, topic is a very coincidence of what i said so significance of social media in pharmaceutical industry but the topic itself is very broad so we you know you can talk on this one is i'm talking on social media second one is pharmaceutical industry and social media itself is a very vast uh, subject and also the pharmaceutical industry you have so many verticals however in today's presentation uh, one minute i will just uh, share the presentation am i audible yes sir so hope it's clear there is no disturbance no sir it's clear okay that's good so since uh, the file size is big it takes uh, you know sometimes to yeah hope it is uh, visible now to all the audience yes sir it is uh, it is visible okay good just give me a moment yeah so welcome pharmacist uh, once again a warm welcome to all of you so again we say that namaste so namaste is a global sign today uh, so uh, today's topic is uh, significance of social media in pharmaceutical industry so before i move on to the session i would also like to request the audience to be more attentive and wherever you know they feel that they want to comment something they can always write their comments because it is not going to be a very interactive platform because it is not one to one so but corona virus has taught us how we can virtually interact effectively and you know make it more significant so the topic is as i said significance of social media in pharma industry is a very vast topic i am going to talk but out of the entire uh, topic i will be touching in pharma industry perspective only related to a pharma marketing in pharma marketing with respect to the patient so because social media in pharma industry is a vast subject in fact my phd is on digital strategies in the globalization of medium sized pharmaceutical companies so it runs into you know hundreds of pages and so many articles so it's a vast topic so i'm going to restrict today's discussion today's talk only with respect to a pharmaceutical marketing and also how the social media is going to benefit the pharmacists so to enable them to understand social media in positively and you know upgrade their skills to become more fruitful for their careers so welcome to the presentation this is a standard disclaimer so information of this presentation is collected and collated from online resources journals company websites for the purpose of only academic interest the views and suggestions expressed in this presentation are those of mine that is speakers and do not necessarily represent my position or company institution or policy makers any content references statements pictures trademarks tag lines quotes etc used in this presentation are owned by respective persons authors bloggers of this company and also this presentation is only for the purpose of uh, academic and it cannot be used copied reproduced without speaker's consent so why we use disclaimer because when we go on to present our product present our uh, you know the portfolio and when we talk about the marketing uh, aspects of the product 
basically we are supposed to use the disclaimer because our products our the technologies dossiers is a combination of many things so basically we use this as a disclaimer to protect yourself so you all must be thinking one more uh, bloody boring webinar and on sunday so it's more painful so you all guys must be cursing uh, you know uh, the corona because i have my kids so basically from morning to evening they are you know glued to the computer so in the name of webinars so from you know the school and college so and they are bugged up you know last two months so you must have listened many webinars on different topics from different speakers i'm sure many things will be going in your mind isn't it hello yes sir. yes of course even even if i were in your place i would be cursing because on a sunday but unfortunately due to lockdown you know you do not have any other option other than sitting at home so be with the phone or with the you know the social media or you also spend some time to attend the webinars so some of the, you know it's on a lighter side i just want to make it more humorous some of the memes it must be going through your mind i like webinars just not yours ends webinar no you can just log out but it is not possible i think i'm sure you must be having the attendance and uh, uh, you know your college will be having all the details of your attendance your presence everything so but anyway don't log out it's a very interesting webinar so i'm sure you must be making this face one more webinar and some of my friends if they have received a webinar they must have misread wine bar so anyway it's it's going to be sort of a wine bar because it's a social media it's a very interesting topic so and you know i always say that i love webinars webinars are my favorite so these are some of the memes i thought i put forward before you know going into deep into the presentation so friends first thing we do immediately after getting from the bed what we do in the morning you remember you just imagine you know remember what your parents used to do so basically in india we have a belief of looking at our loved ones so that our day will be productive or day will be lucky maybe it's a spouse it's a child or we also look at the photo you know god's photo or almighty's photo and we pray god and also those days they used to say i i'll quote one of the sanskrit sloka so basically so uh, you know you pray god that you know your day should be good so but things have changed as we get up we don't even brush the teeth we don't even drink a cup cup of coffee we don't even look at anyone we just take our phone and we start looking for the notifications whether it is instant messaging whether it is a facebook or linkedin or youtube so we are all you know for us now social media and phone is like a god and demigod and all the angels isn't it because mobile phone has become an extended organ of our human system so we have so many organs like heart my you no know, brain we have lungs we have kidney pancreas you know we have so many organs you know which is they are running day and out to make us alive to make us active and to make us work so also now the phone has become an extended organ of human body when which phone makes us alive phone makes us active so this is the power of smartphone or an internet and a social media so some of the interesting facts of mobile phone or a smartphone the phone has moved from mobile phone mobile phone has moved from smartphone because it's smartphone why it's smartphone because it does things in a very smart way what is smart specific measurable achievable realistic and time bound with a phone you can have you know the entire world have a phone internet then you can live alone for months or years like a sages or a saints so let's look at the interesting facts of mobile phone and the human relationships it's very interesting let's look at how many times we unlock on an average the study shows that as per the study on an average each person whoever using the phone he unlocks his phone one ten times this is an average this is the data which is available on net you can go and check one ten times don't you think one ten times is 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 like a number i don't know one ten times whether we touch our face whether we look each other but we unlock our phone more than one ten times 
I'm sure you know there are a lot of youngsters over here. They'll be doing more than that. I do more than this because you know my entire work is on a phone. I, I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I deal with more than 100 countries with uh, 200 customers, uh, 200 partners, with so many team members. Phone is for me extended organ. It is it's a part of my life. So one ten times a day we unlock our smartphone. Nine times in an active hour. In an active hour because we we sleep for eight hours. Rest of the eight hours, you always, you know, nine times in an active hour, we unlock our phone. Highest frequency users, it goes up to once in every six seconds. Once in every six seconds. And let's look at, you know, how, how much time we are online. So one is unlocking the phone, first parameter, then online. You can see 92% use mobile devices for going online. Let's say you have so many smartphones in the world. 92% use mobile devices for going online. The purpose of you is having a smartphone is going online. It's not just like that, you know, keeping it like a, uh, a smart piece or a uh, asset at home. And 6SM platforms claim to have more than 1 billion active users at any given point of time. The global population is 7 billion plus. At any given point of time, there are more than 1 billion active users. Then six and a half hours spend on internet. On an average, a person, he spends six and a half hours on internet. So we means, you know, why I want to you know, put forward these facts, you should understand you're living in an era of technology. You're living in an era of digital. You're living in an era of internet, era of, you know, what we say that, world 2.0 world you know before technology was different world after acquiring internet and you know the social media is different it is called as a world 2.0 it is not a digital technology it's world 2.0 so because it is going to play a very important role in a student's life also which i am going to talk in detail so let's get into social media now can you name these logos i think the logo is enough so you don't need to have a name, you know, whether suffix or uh, prefix or behind or top, bottom, you know, any company, they will have logo and the name, but the social medias are so popular. So even a small child can looking at F, he says that the small child will say that it is a Facebook. Next is Instagram. So what is this? This is WeChat, which is a Chinese app, YouTube, LinkedIn. It's very important. Uh, Twitter, Google Plus, and Telegram. So these logos, these images, so they have become a very important aspect of every individual or every professional or every personal on this planet. So one or other way, we are associated with some or all of these social media apps. Isn't it? So according to me, so you know, we all put the tattoos just to show that, you know, what you like, what you love. Maybe sometimes we put the tattoo of our mother or a father or a god or a spouse or your child or what you like. You know, some people, they put flower. So these things, according to me, are invisible tattoos on human mind. Though they're all invisible, so they're so impactful in our lives. So because we basically we follow and we are brand ambassador of one of these social media apps. That's why they're called as a invisible, invisible tattoos on human mind. So what do we do on social media? I'm sure, you know, it's not a new topic. You know, you must be doing the same. But to be an later said, I just want to put in a different perspective. We post, right? We all post on social media. So very, very, very nice meme. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, Telugu audience here and also Many uh, Canada Canadians they watch Telugu movies. I'm from Bangalore, so it's a very popular movie. You all know that you know the movie name is uh, Premin Chingun Damra. It was you know it's two decades old movie. It's not two decades. Yeah, it's close to two decades. So it's a uh, it's super hit of uh, Venkatesh. Venkatesh is a hero, and you can see Prakash Raj is asking Venkatesh, "Inta ki M chestu now, M M chestu now." Then uh, hero says. Post low, post low, uh, post low, yes, means 
ఐ ఎమ్ పుటింగ్ ద పోస్ట్ ఎక్కడ పోస్ట్ ఆఫీస్ లోనా లేదంటే కొరియర్ లోనా ఈ సేస్ నో ఫేస్బుక్ లో సార్ మీన్స్ దట్ ఈస్ ద జనరేషన్ గ్యాప్ వాట్ మై ఫాదర్ ఆర్ యువర్ ఫాదర్ థింగ్స్ దట్ పోస్ట్ మీన్స్ యు నో పుటింగ్ ఇన్ ద పోస్ట్ ఆఫీస్ సో బట్ వాట్ వీ మీన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ పోస్ట్ వీ ఆర్ పోస్టింగ్ ఆన్ ఏ ఫేస్బుక్ ఆర్ ఏ ఇన్స్టాగ్రామ్ ఆర్ లింక్డ్ ఇన్ ఆర్ వీ చాట్ యు నో వీ ఆర్ సెండింగ్ పోస్టింగ్ ఆన్ వీ చాట్ sending messages and we chat or whatsapp so that is post what we do we also share our images you know on social media it's, it's a very funny platform so we share some we see we receive some image and so instagram or uh, facebook so it is very attractive beautiful handsome that is on the screen but behind the screen behind the screen is something else so many people get you know fooled with the images so we also fool around many times so we post the we upload the images then we also upload the videos so the videos of your uh, uh, you know the favorite sports or a sports person or some instances like you will find the videos of euros video of euros singh hitting six sixes against england in t20 that has been watched by millions millions of viewers around the world i'm sure you must have watched those video and the, the video of anil kumble taking 10 wickets against pakistan that is watched by millions of people you know on the net so we post videos and the songs so the, the songs that you love the songs that you follow you know you post those songs on you know the facebook or youtube etc so technically what is social media social media is a web or app based platforms designed to allow people share content quickly efficiently and real time basis you remember just 5 years back before the evolution of whatsapp you want to post a video you need to have a high speed internet data to send a video or a image we remember like you know posting so many videos in the marketing and the product campaigns it used to take long time in whatsapp it is just a fraction of a minute i would not say it's a minute you want to upload a video of 10 mb it truncates and it makes it to you know a smaller size and it can send to thousands of people in just less than a minute so why i said quickly efficiently and real time you get everything on a real time so now with a zoom you are able to view me you are able to listen to me like audio visual and you are also able to see my presentation is it it a wonderful thing so whoever has invented let's thank bill gates let's thank mark zuckerberg so these are the great people they have invented a big technologies which are used to do things quickly efficiently and in real time basis so this is what is social media and uh, which has given to us and we do a lot of things on the social media let's look at some of the statistics the users of social media apps globally these are the approximate numbers i think tiktok you know so it is such a wonderful platform unfortunately it is coming from china most of the countries they are blocking uh, tiktok uh, because of its uh, security issues including us and europe and also in india many people they feel that you know they are uh, uninstalling tiktok because of the security issues but tiktok is a wonderful platform like zoom where you can upload you know you a lot of your videos you can make memes you can make a lot of funny videos and it's amazing platform you know I, even i do watch a lot of videos on tiktok so tiktok is number in the five position more than 800 million users using tiktok next comes linkedin so since you guys basically most of you are the students hello hello madam can you can you listen to me yes sir we can listen to you yeah please if if at all any disturbance you can call me yes, because sir. you know yes. it's a technology yes sir you, we can't trust yes sir okay is is it audible and visible am i clear if yes, i'm sir. if clear, i'm bit fa- if i'm bit fast please you know interfere and you can just uh, uh, communicate to me so that accordingly i can adjust which can you know meet the students uh, uh, requirement yes sir we will let you know <clears throat> yeah so let's look at the next one is 
I'm sorry. The LinkedIn. LinkedIn has more than 1.3 billion users because LinkedIn is a professional app only students who are studying in uh, you know the colleges and the professionals like us who are working in different corporates so basically they subscribe to linkedin they download the app uh, web are uh, you know the um, uh, app based uh, platform and basically we start using the linkedin uh, to upgrade our uh, professional career next is whatsapp you all know that whatsapp has become so popular then eventually facebook has acquired uh, whatsapp so whatsapp is a instant messaging platform which can be used both through your computer as well as through your smartphone instantly you can you know send your messages to multiple people i think due to security issues now whatsapp has some limitations where you cannot share with more than 5 users because of ongoing corona issue it is not only in india it's worldwide they have put lot of restrictions they have clipped the wings of whatsapp so that the information is not shared rapidly because see information you have both good and uh, bad information so whatsapp has more than 2 billion users next is youtube like you all uh, must be using youtube youtube uh, basically you can upload your video you can upload whatever that uh, video that you prepared to cook the food music uh, you know the uh, your the skit anything you can upload youtube has more than 2 billion users and the largest one is facebook so facebook has 2.4 billion users all put together you can see the entire world is using most of the platforms how popular is social media social media as i said the global population is 7 billion out of 7 billion half of the population are using social media don't you think it is a very very powerful platform powerful than anything in the world social media is so powerful because 50% of the world's population they are actively using social media so social media can break our neck 49% of the total population as i said they are active on social media and the growth it is growing almost a double digit growth 9.2% growth in total numbers of social media users in the years come the entire world the entire world except the infants will be using the social media because infants are also considered in our population one in every 11 people on this earth is on facebook so imagine facebook has you know huge impact on every human being so more than 2.5 million websites have facebook integration so basically once there are close to 2.5 billion users on facebook so what companies they do they integrate into directly into the facebook which i'll be talking into the next slides so there there are not only you know these uh, uh, apps you will find multiple numbers of you know the social media apps which are available some are free to download some you know you may have to pay a little bit of you know depends on the app that you want to use and depends on the purpose that you want to use those apps so these are some of the apps that are freely available on uh, social media so let's get into teenagers what teenagers do in the social media 22% of the teenagers since you, most of you are not not most of you all of you are not teenagers so we already crossed that say age but this is for your brothers or siblings at home 22% of the teenagers log on to their favorite social media site more than 10 10 times a day this is again one of the statistics 75% of the teenagers now own cell phones you remember those days if our parents ask what you want especially like uh, now i'm uh, nearing to 50 so they are, they used to ask what do you want especially being a teenager we used to say okay get me a cricket kit get me a, you know the volleyball get me a football or get me a bicycle you know we can't afford to have a bike as a teenager till 19 until going to the college but the current generation they request their parents to get the cell phone that to a apple or a samsung not below that that to be very expensive so that is the influence of mobile phone and the internet and the teenagers 51% of them are using always you know they'll be using the text you ask what are you doing they will not even listen they'll be just smiling you thought you know they are very happy but they are not happy with you they are happy with the texting with the friends sometimes they are sad and you should see their expressions you know it's uh, when i travel outside in the airport i am a person who always wants to study the human behavior 
in the airport in the metro train so they'll be just like that they'll be smiling they all of a sudden from you know they'll be in a different waves of you know the life they'll smile sometimes they become upset then they become anxious sometimes i've seen people started crying they don't even look at the people around them they just you will find so many expressions in an hour time while you're in the airport in the bus stand or in the metro station i'm sure you also experience this but not in india but still in india we are not uh, when you compare with southeast asia or the western world still in india it's okay people they spend more time going out and playing outside 25% of them use social media i mean to say the teenagers they are always on the social media it's very dangerous 24% 24% of them use for instant messaging as i said the instant messaging apps are wechat and uh, you know the um, telegram and uh, whatsapp they use these are some of the statistics which is available on the line so having understood some of the basics of social media let's get into the next level of you know the learning so as i said social media can be breaker or maker isn't it hello it is very important for all of you know to know that how effectively you should use social media for learning for earning and for growing in your careers or joining and growing in your careers so today i'm going to talk with lot of experience i'll bring in my journey of non social you know non phone to phone non internet to internet and non social media to social media because as i said last 24 years i've been in industry when i joined we were not having any telephones like you know my first telephone i started using when i was in abroad or else while i was working in india i was not having any even not smartphone even a normal phone handset we call it as a handset let's see how it's going to make or break so you all know that you know we used to get a lot of chats just you know two months back that because of the onset of corona you, you all know that we are living in the era of corona we say that we used to have ac and bc after christ and before christ so we are living in a ac 2020 and now exactly we are we can always classify our era into before corona era and after corona era but currently we are living in the era of corona ec era of corona eoc now after corona then there are going to be lot of changes guys you will find wonderful things which are going to really have a huge impact on the human lives after corona we are in the living on the era of corona so i think you must have received lot of instant messages you know quoting that world is going to end on april 29th i remember in um, during my childhood days way back uh, way back uh, you know 30 years back we used to have you know some incidents of plague and some incidents of uh, uh, smallpox and all and uh, my grandparents they used to say you know world is going to you know end soon it's like a doomsday and uh, i have seen people you know cutting their uh, sheep goats and the chicken and you know they started eating thinking that world is going to end we had a something a real you know the similar panic two months back that after corona world is going to end but you know that is the panic this is uh, this is the impact of social media and also people started spreading rumors bill gates is behind covid 19 origin because coincidentally he had given a, he had delivered a talk in usa in one of the platform elkit platform where he has spoken about the virus which is going to come sooner or later in by 2020 it was a coincidence because bill gates is a founder of microsoft he has founded such a wonderful organization where we are all using today second he is also one of the biggest donor for you know the funding for healthcare programs around the world including you know the hiv uh, hepatitis and you know so many diseases so then their theory is linking microsoft co-founder to virus spread social media it really it flooded social media over 16000 fb posts in single hour were shared 9 lakh times close to million times and also they started sharing the video of bill gates speaking 5 years back you know this happens in social media so these are some of the negative areas which i am going to take on the social media just for you to understand before we move to the positive side of the social media and also the whatsapp messages claiming 
there is a lot of treatment. It started with BCG vaccine, hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, you know, lopinavir, retinavir. There was so volatile. Being in pharma industry, I have seen many people used to call me, our relatives, friends, you know, uh, the elderly people. Can I take hydroxychloroquine? Can I, you know, take BCG vaccine? I said, no, don't do that. Because people started receiving those messages and we all started believing that. We started believing that whatever the information available on social media is true and correct, which is not right. You have to be very wise while interpretation of these messages or the information. And also, just to avoid all these things, just to overcome this, Google immediately, they came out with a platform. They wanted to have a fact check because Google was not having a fact check and immediately they started working on this. Other darker shades of social media. So I'm sure, you know, most of you are youngsters. You know, we used to have a bullying those days. It was a verbal bullying, you know, physically in front of you. That, that was very difficult for youngsters to, you know, uh, tolerate. I have seen in my own eyes, a couple of my friends, they quit studies, they quit life because they could not, they could not really tolerate the bullying. But now we have entered into an era of cyber bullying, which is more dangerous than a physical bullying or a verbal bullying. Cyber bullying is on the rise, my friends. And especially the girls report three times more harassment than boys. So you have to be very careful. So this is one of the gray and darker shade of the social media where many, many youngsters, adolescents, even the children, they undergo bullying on the social media and they get into depression and they try to you know, take very extreme steps because they cannot tolerate the cyber bullying. So as I said, the cyber bullying on online harassment is when a person is threatened, harassed, humiliated, embarrassed, or otherwise targeted by another person using the internet, interactive and digital technologies. And also you all know that in say whatever the data that you have entered into the internet, into the social media is impossible to delete or remove. So be cautious. So use social media for your, you know, the progressive things, not for a destructive, always use it for a constructive purposes. So especially you all are youngsters, you are in college, so adrenaline is pumping in your blood so that you want to do everything. So those days we, we used to go for, uh, you know, uh, outside uh, uh, trips. So we used to spend every three months, all of our friends, we used to travel out. But unfortunately now, because of the generation gap, because of the availability of social media, we grew to, so, you know, the smartphones. So influence of uh, advertisements on buying. So, you know, like how more, many, 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 they have lost crores of rupees, lakhs of their, you know, hard earned money because of the fake advertisements which are spread on the social media saying that, okay, you invest 1,000 rupees, I'll pay you back 1,000, you know, 10,000 rupees in one year. It is not even double, it is 10 times or five times. I think many, many of the youngsters, they play rummies. So they go online, they go virtual games, they use their cards. End of the day, you know, majority of them are cheated online. And also that is because of the advertisements. You know, what is impacting our lives is the advertisement. So morning to evening, you open any app, you'll get an advertisement. So those days, earlier days, I was also wondering what social media companies, you know, will get in return because they're, they've invested billions of dollars. Then we have realized, you know, they make money through selling our data, making our data available to all the prospective marketers to sell their product uh, products. It all, you know, because the algorithms, you know, they use the algorithms on the net to gather our data and our behavior, our interest, and they sell the products. Simple, you, you go to online and you search, I want to travel to Hooti, which are the best places to see in Hooti. You see, automatically on your uh, Google, on your uh, Google app, on uh, social, like Facebook app, you start getting, you know, the messages, you start getting the advertisements. These are the good hotels to stay in OT. These are the good places. These are the good travel agents. And also you get a make my trip advertisements. You know why? 
because you have shared your interest you have shared your interest on social media that you want to travel you want to make a travel so with that it's not only you also get a genuine advertisements but along with the genuine genuine advertisements you also get a fraudsters and also you get the fake advertisements when which they trap and they try to you know clone your card and they try to misuse your cards and your funds and your time next is so i think uh, it is self explanatory so the uh, facebook it makes and breaks the relationships so people don't speak to their partners parents on the phone so much any longer you know that so we try to post we try to post our you know the feelings we try to do instant messaging because it is free of cost only what is required is a smartphone and the internet connection internet connection is cheap and rather than we exchange one to one or over the phone so we try to use you know we try to use our uh, you know uh, messages and uh, there is no hand in typing the messages at times so we can control the tongue through the mind it's very difficult to control our you know the texting abilities so we we try to we try to write everything we we try to pour our feelings emotions everything over the phone then you regret unfortunately you know the other person has authentic text record to prove that you have you know you have quoted this so once written that's what we say think before you ink so once you text it once you write it so that you have made your feelings emotions very concrete it's worse than the thing that you speak so like start as sharing pics and chat about uh, you know the trifles of the day and many people they misuse their relationships and they post wrong things and you know they break the relationships the ugly side of the war ideas so you can see like we all know that isis isis in iraq and syria they seized you know one of the biggest cities in both the countries so mosul uh, one of the city which was seized in iraq so you can see you know they started sharing a lot of pics you know to create uh, the uh, emotions the feelings sentiments and with using the instant messaging app within few hours they captured a city of 1.5 million 1.5 million population you can see how they use the instant texting app across the groups of isis and how they captured 1.5 million just 2000 people they captured 1.5 million uh, you know the population city in just couple of hours that's that was possible because of the social media power then the ugly side what of ideas you know that as i said many of the terrorists around the world they threaten they threaten how they threaten i think you all know looking at this video simple so isis they used to terrorize people they used to terrorize people by just killing them you know and posting the videos on live and they terrorize the countries they have terrorized the countries so these are some of the videos which was you know sharing across all the social media platforms and also like uh, just as 8 9 months back we all received this video of a new zealand local he live streamed the slaughter of 49 people at two mosques in uh, you know christchurch in new zealand and has shined a spotlight on how terrorists employ social media and they terrorize what it ter terrorist people who terrorize anyone they do not have any religion they do not have any country these are the people who terrorize they are called as a terrorist according to me and they are using social media very effectively and it's very impactful so this guy even he went on to you know display why he wanted to kill the people with his gun and he was on live for a couple of hours where he was live streaming the entire video of his killings which was ruthless the ugly side you know like you know this has happened in uh, uh, you know the uh, bangladesh where just a small whatsapp chat or instant messaging you know it went on to burn the mosques burn the temples and burn the buddhist uh, temples so again it is coming from bangladesh so the another very important that's about you know disturbing the uh, communal you know the communal fa fabric of the country and also you know disturbing the harmony of the country and the next is what's happening on social media is social media is like a suicidal pill 
and people who want to commit suicide those days you know they used to drink poison or you know hang themselves or jump uh, jump in front of the train you know these were some of the tactics they were using but you know the social media is offering a lot of suicidal methods an immense quantity of information on the topic of suicide is available on the internet and via social media on how you one can commit suicide the so and how to kill themselves and the best suicide methods to stimulate the results of a typical search conducted by a person seeking information on the suicide methods i think uh, there are a lot of people they must have watched this movie so though it was not a commercial hit but it was considered critically one of the best movie of you know that year so the movie name is called nenu and na rakshasi so the hero of the movie is rana rana dagubati and the heroine was uh, you know eliana uh, de souza so what the movie basically a curious girl who wants to understand the pain of the people who are in the process of committing suicide and posts the suicide video live on social media so why she was doing you know it's i'm sure you must have watched this movie and with this you know basically she also wants to commit a suicide she is undergoing some sort of a disorder some sort of a social disturbance and she is basically she wants to feel the pain of a person committing suicide and after that she also wants to commit a suicide so this is one of the movie which was shot and uh, it movie has got you know lot of good message if people can take it positively and there is another movie called a movie name is untraceable which is available on amazon i'm sure uh, some of must uh, must have uh, watched this movie this movie is also a suspense thriller so basically a person he went on you know killing uh, the people and post it uh, uh, online through his uh, social media through his social media platform and also he will have a website this is basically to tease an fbi federal bureau of investigation because to take a revenge of his father who was killed was shot down by an fbi because of uh, some uh, mistaken identity and basically the media people they will run this to get a good trp and to get a good commercial success you will identify the people who are all involved in killing of his father and he will use a very unique techniques to kill the people the technique is simple so the image the displayed image basically is a fbi officer so he will use a very high illum, you know Im, you know the illuminated lamps and he will connect with his website the higher the number of people you know log into the his website the lamp illuminates and with that he dies so that is the method he uses so having learned having understood in a very practical way of the negative side of social media let's get into a positive side of the social media social media can be a kingpin in deciding the ruler i think you have seen our prime minister how efficiently used social media to reach a different levels of you know the voters he has used you know twitter he has used facebook in facebook again he has the two different identity so so that you know he can reach a different sectors of the voters so narendra modi was able to observe how networks such as facebook and twitter could help him to campaign politically on the internet so he opened the two unique profiles as i said in his presentation which allowed him to have a wide reach with the users and at the same time to have a real time contact with you know these voters and uh, you all know that how oh, you know what uh, uh, trump donald trump dt has used social media like twitter and uh, facebook to win against you know, hillary clinton in his uh, previous uh, you know the election so is social media a ban or a boon a good or bad a maker or breaker according to me it is it is a real boon social media is a real boon invest your time in social media very wisely very effectively so it's up to each user to use social sites wisely to enhance their professional and the social life 
underline professional and social life very important and exercise caution to ensure they do not fall victim to online dangers so online danger is one of the most dangerous you know situation currently social media can convert idea into reality so you all know that the first the crowdfunding movie was in canada the movie name is lucia it is available online you can go and watch the movie amazing uh, movie again you know it has won a lot of uh, critic awards globally actually when the director of the movie or a writer of the movie when he wanted to produce this movie there he did not get any you know the producers to invest in this movie his name is pawan kumar and he used a new model called a crowdfunding model when which in hours in hours he was able to collect he was able to collect 51 lakhs not in hours i'm sorry in 10 days in 10 days he was able to collect 51 lakhs you know telling the story of his movie and this movie has more than 500 you know the producers so this is again you know his benchmark after that many many of the writers they started searching the producers online so this is called as a crowdfunding you you have an any idea you go everything is available online you know there are so many people waiting on the other side to invest on in your ideas so social media can be used for converting your idea into reality and also crowdfunding and fundraiser for any ngos i think you must have come across with many apps you know including an app like milap where it is a social you know uh, it's a non uh, government organization not for profit where they are doing lot of social activities so the people who have in need of you know the funds to get a treatment especially critical ill patients infants and elderly people they can get, log into milap their milap basically he connects with millions of you know the users around the world where they do funding to treat the patients to help the patients to get a effective treatment so this is milap you know you, as a student you can you know start your involving in all these things social media can influence people change opinions and win elections so as i said how narendra modi is effectively using social not only in a, at a, a central level even at a state level so there are a lot of cms who have used social media very effectively to win the elections conventional it is basically using your conventional wisdom and a digital technology is the need of an hour to win the elections and to win the people and win their ideas so these are some of the leaders who are using social media globally and uh, this is that of which is available online i thought i'll share it with you so hillary clinton has 41 million users followed by joko widodo of indonesia donald trump of america narendra modi of india and barack obama of united states of america ex president he has the highest followers followed by narendra modi so you know you can build your own brand through social media so let's look at how social media can make an individual brand to earn millions you all know that priyanka chopra so she also acts in hollywood she has a fan you know the following of close to 52.2 million so which is close to 5 crore people they follow priyanka chopra not 5 crore people uh, yeah it's close to 5 crore people they follow priyanka chopra you know how much she earns she charges 1.3 crores for every single post on social media just she says that you know i'm spending time with my family she puts a photo with her husband or with her mother or with her sister she charges 1.3 crore then we have cristiano ronaldo who is world's leading footballer he has the highest followers as a sports person with more than 176 million followers follow cristiano ronaldo he charges 6.73 crore close to 1 million dollars next we have our favorite virat kohli captain of indian cricket he charges he has 36 million followers he also charges close to 1.3 crores for every post that he posts on social media 
Social media can help to market your products virtually, economically, and efficiently. I think most of your youngsters, how many times you have gone to showrooms, unless you know you want to spend, uh, you know, your times uh, hanging out, uh, the, the sipping a coffee, having a pizza, or having a idli. Idli is you know outdated. You spend on burgers and the pizzas. So everything, you know, we live in a virtual world. So we just log into Amazon, Snapdeal, or OLX, or Flipkart. Amazon, you can buy anything on this planet. Flipkart, you everything is available on this planet. OLX, you want to sell, you don't need to go and put your stuff outside. You just post your pics, post your price, people will come and pick it up from the house. So virtually, economically, and efficiently, you can do things. So that's how social media and business. So it increases the communication between the people and business in a very economical and effective way. You can build the brand. You can build a brand. You post your product online on Facebook or Amazon. Uh, but to post on Amazon, you have a different uh, process. Yeah, on a social media, you can post. You can post like, you know, you can post on Facebook. You want to sell some product. So let's discuss on other aspects of uh, uh, social media in the brand building. Social media can help to reestablish relationships, find our roots. So what, uh, you know, it helps us to stay connected, like how we are connecting, you know, I'm sure. No, you are not sitting in single place. I'm I'm talking from uh, Hyderabad. You all are sitting across the Bangalore. You can see, uh, maybe I'm here. You all are, you know, we are connected through social media. So the actual selling point of social media is to make people stay connected. Social media reconnect their old friends, learn about cultures and societies. So especially, I've completed my you know uh, higher school in the year 88, 89. So we are connected. In fact, today night, we are going to have a Zoom call of a long time. So we are connected with our very old friends from our primary school or a middle school. We have groups. It is helping us to share our you know, uh, uh, achievements, share our uh, observations. Also, share what's happening in my place, the place I'm stay, you know, staying. Since I travel across the world, basically, I share the culture you know, that I experienced there about that society. So that, you know, it helps us to get connected. Having understood about a general information social media, let's get into the profession that we are in. How social media, you know, it is impacting in a pharmaceutical industry. As I said, I'm not going to talk the complete on pharmaceutical industry. Maybe I'm going to talk on only in a marketing in with respect to the patient. Because even if I were have to talk on a marketing in social media, it is hours of a topic. Let's look at, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Every pharmaceutical company wants to reach all the stakeholders. So who are the stakeholders for a pharmaceutical company? I'm sorry, there seems to be some. Yeah. So for a pharmaceutical company, there are various stakeholders. So we are in a very different business where our consumer customer is different. Our consumer end user is different. We have multiple customers because of, you know, we are in a business of health, business of lives. So we can't sell to direct end user because in between there is a licensed person, a doctor and a pharmacist. So our customers are, one is doctor, and a pharmacist. These are the key customers. Then apart from that, you have insurer, you have media, you have hospital, they, you know, they provide the infrastructure, and also specialists are a super specialist. But our two, three important stakeholders are, one is patient. We all work for the benefit of a patient, isn't it? We build hospital, we build, uh, you know, we provide with all the diagnostic services, we develop a product, for that, we do build a R&D, we build a manufacturing facility where we all in the service of a patient. We all work for the benefit of a patient. We all work to treat the disease and disorder. So here, these are our st stakeholders. But as a pharmaceutical company, we have to make an impact, isn't it? We are in the uh, profession of marketing. We have to make an impact, means 
we should have our product reaching patient and to all the stakeholders in a very effective way so everyone reaches these stakeholders but why only some companies put that impact so let's look at how we are going to make an impact so this is a very you know the it's a, i would say that it's a very important for people who wants to you know get into sales marketing business development product management so these are called as a touch points so how we can bring our customer to the product so the we have we pass through a different stages of you know the marketing different phases of how patient touches our touch points it is not just sharing connecting through social media will help in building the brands reaching them in all possible ways online and offline that increases the equity of a company or a brand see sometimes you just make an advertisement like you know there is an advertisement uh, of fair and lovely or you know uh, the maggi noodles just making an advertisement will not make the patient to buy your product then there are touch points i'm just talking in a very practical way what fair and lovely what noodles company they do they put some you know touch points in a shopping mall entrance where you will find a stall they are cooking the noodles then they will offer you the noodles you have heard you have seen the product but you are not tasted the product so that is another touch point so once you taste the product it is very delicious nutritious juicy juicy so immediately you go to shop you have to make the product available in the shop right you have to make the product available in the uh, shop so that is again another touch point so when you look at this graph customer loyalty versus time so these are the touch points online search or respond to a social message stay connected through social media and pulling them to the your websites so you have to pull them to visit your website so that's how you have to create the awareness after visiting the website then you start discussing online and offline so you have to start discussing with online and offline then they visit the gp or a doctor then once they visit the gp and a doctor so you have different you know variety of uh, uh, medicine one is uh, you know controlled drugs like you know the scheduled uh, m drugs then you have uh, prescription drugs scheduled c drugs so then you have a otc drugs where you know uh, sometimes we also call them is a otx like multivitamins which are prescribed by the doctors you know the dermastetics which are prescribed by the, by the doctors so those things are called as a uh, ot extracts which are prescribed by the doctors so here by engaging them online here what will happen you see you have to share them the relevant content and showcasing as a reliable partner for useful information as a responsible pharmaceutical company so you have to continuously engage or in on all touch points so that you can you can get take this patient through it is like like you know basically you are going to talk on a product you are going to talk on your technical capabilities basically you are going to provide them lot of information about your company about the quality efficacy safety of the products so these touch points are very important to continuously engage the patients so now how the on online because of the internet because of you know the social media so we are going to talk on patients so now how many of us how many of us use google for getting health information before reaching out a doctor or a pharmacist or a dentist everyone whoever has a phone whoever has an internet whoever is using google everyone basically they go to google if they have a problem if they have a problem if they have a headache if they have a uh, cdt if they have some uh, you know the irritation on the skin if they have some itching in the eyes if they have a severe headache migraine immediately what you do you go to google so we call it as a google mother so mother of all the information all the information is available online example here you can say you type just high blood then google does rest of the work then it gives so many things high blood pressure high blood pressure symptoms high blood sugar high blood sugar symptoms high blood pressure diet 
So then a patient he goes to high blood pressure. Then what he does? He gets a lot of articles and information about the blood pressure. You know, patient is getting a lot of information. Why I'm talking this is patient is getting educated. Patient is better than us in many aspect, aspects. So there is a saying in Canada. So Hale Rogi Vasa Vaidingina Melu means you know the whole patient will have more information than a new doctor. So here what will patient does? He gets a lot of articles and information on the high blood pressure. Then he will become an expert. He will become an expert. Then he, he knows, you know, what is systolic, what is diastolic, what is, you know, the borderline blood pressure. He knows about hypotension. He knows about hypertension. So then he becomes a doctor, you know, a virtual doctor or a virtual pharmacist. Then after that, what he does? Immediately you go to the next level. Then you will enter what is the best treatment for psoriasis. I'm, I'm just referring to another patient. Then, you know, psoriasis is an autoimmune disorder where, you know, it affects uh, all the age group patients, uh, whether it is children or middle age group adults and also uh, the senior, you know, the geriatric patients. So now, after that, what he does? He will get a lot of information from blocks and surveys. So you see here, after entering this information on the Google, or then you will get into some voting system. So here you can see, my wife uses Neutrogena T gel shampoo for hers and it works very well. So then you also do the same thing. You go to Amazon, you want to buy something, basically you follow the service, blindly you follow service. Because we have believed that whatever the information which is available on social media is genuine, is correct. But majority of the cases, it is correct. Sometimes, you know, we get cheated and we get a wrong information. Now, we are also, as a pharmaceutical professional, maybe you are working as a, you are going to work as a pharmacist, you are going to as a work as a medical representative, regulatory executive, product manager, marketing manager, but you have to remember that you are going to deal with very tough, you know, the e-patients. So here, with the percentage itself, a patient will decide, I'll use Neutrogena gel. You, you don't want to even connect to the doctor or a pharmacist. So then what he does? Basically, you go, to, you start you know, buying products online. You know, like any other products, you start buying the product online. So then what he will, when he wants to make a purchase, what he looks for? He looks for good schemes, good offers, and also a good quality, good quality medicine, which is, recommended by many patients, many doctors, or many pharmacists. Unfortunately, the pharmaceutical products, the prescription products, we cannot do advertisement. This is with reference to the Neutrogena shell gel shampoo, so which is you know used in basically psoriatic condition. So it is available OTC. So then you will go and buy this product online. So here, as a responsible pharmaceutical company, as an aggressive pharmaceutical company and a product manager, they have to have a different strategy. I'm just looking at time. Yes, we have uh, 20 more minutes. I'll try and complete with a given time. Then, apart from online purchase, then there is a, another, you know, the platform which is called as a patients like me, reaching out to a similar patient. So let's say patient is having a condition of some sort of, you know, breathing difficulty. Now, what he does, he goes and he put, you know, you can write all these things, you know, filter patients by age, gender, then treatment, symptom, then you have everything which is available. Then patient is becoming more expert. He is not only knowledgeable, he is becoming more expert. He can teach any medical representative pharmacist or, you know, clinical pharmacist or a clinical clinician. So he's becoming more expert than others because he is going very specific with this age group. You can see, even you can look at the patient at your age group because each disease behaves differently with age groups. Headache for a child, you cannot express. Headache for an adult is different, headache for an aged patient is different, right? Itching in an eye, it varies from age to age. So that patient is more target specific and he reaches to a similar patient with a similar symptoms with a similar age group. With all these things, 
what is that we are going to you know achieve what is that going to we are receive we are going to get a patient e patient e patient means electronic patient we have already entered with an era of e patient where e patient is loaded with is engaged is 24 of 7 is engaged with a system basically it is a phone or a you know the laptop or a computer system he is empowered he is empowered with a lot of information you know he is empowered with lot of information as i said he is having electronic gadgets to basically to understand everything to measure his blood pressure to measure the patient's uh, the blood sugar so measure his mood and also he is well equipped with you know a lot of wrist watches bands and everything where he can look at his bp on a real time and he can get his pulse rate heart rate everything you know is available how many kilometers he has walked how many calories he has burnt all this information is everything is well equipped and empowered and also more than anything he is an expert in many aspects so you also feel you know many times i feel shame you know because the patient knows everything lot of information which even i don't know i know some of the information because he is very target specific so this is about the e patient so having understood you know the patient is getting educated so then how a pharmaceutical company can you know manage this so for pharma company should focus on pharmacist let me talk no one what's pharmacist because you are all going to be a pharmacist you are going to make the pharmaceutical company appetite for a personalized information and a real time feedback so it is not only you know dispensing a medicine you know in india unfortunately the pharmacist still yet to play a very crucial role compared to uh, you know the overseas and the foreign companies where i myself i was working as a community and uh, hospital pharmacist where i you know i had to undergo a pharmacist exam i worked there as a close to 3 years i dispensed i counseled you know i am a proud pharmacist so where i was able to interact with the patients and i my knowledge on medicine was very good equal to the doctors i would say so that i can challenge now patient wants you know is appetite for a personalized information so just like that you know marketing a product is not going to help so how pharmaceutical companies can do since next generation patients are looking at the drug reviews and rating systems which evaluate value for money and often recommend alternatives to branded medicine now what patients does uh, they do once after doctor prescribes the medicine he goes and uh, you know purchases the medicine from the from the pharmacy after pharmacist will counsel about the you know the how he has to take the medication you know uh, the dosing uh, what uh, the drug drug interaction all those things will be you know uh, uh, counseled by the patient after that the patient comes back home after spending uh, huge money for buying a branded medicine then patient will log into the company website patient will log into the company website and the, what pharmaceutical companies are doing pharmaceutical companies on their websites on their product websites basically they have a separate you know uh, <coughs> blog place for the patients where patient can load their prescription because pharmaceutical company cannot share a lot of personalized information unless they have the details of the patient medicine and the doctor and the pharmacist who has prescribed and dispensed the medicine where they want patient upload the prescription then patient will get lot of information of the drug you know the that the doctor has prescribed and the pharmacist has dispensed here the patient is basically he is getting a information which is not available outside very personalized information now all the pharmaceutical not all the pharmaceutical companies companies who are, want to attach to their patients to become their long term customers basically they share lot of information to the patients which is not available online then active participation in care and treatment you remember those days in our college days when we had to go to bank so basically we had to go we had to withdraw some money you have to go early in the morning at 9 8:30 and stand in a queue that was a traditional brick and mortar you know the method you now what banks have evolved you know the last two decades there is a huge evolution in banking industry where from a 9 to 5 bank to you know uh, physical banking now they made it any time money you know you have atms where you can withdraw you can use the card on a real time you can do a transaction so same way patients now they do not have the patience they expect everything like the way the banking uh, sorry you know uh, evolved even with the pharmaceutical companies patients 
they expect the information to be on a real time basis as i said patients expect the same focus on their personal preferences from pharmaceutical companies that they are receiving from other sectors of the industry so basically patients focus on convenience and on demand services for busy lives so they go to clinic you now you have lot of apps where you know they can get on the online you know the appointment from the doctors where your appointment is fixed said through procto they go to doctors they get you know they are not wasting time once they get into pharmacy again you know basically they find it very difficult there is only one or two pharmacies uh, while dispensing so they want everything you now because of that you know online pharmacies and e pharmacies have evolved though there are a lot of legal challenges which are going in india on online on the e pharmacy uh, so because once the online and e pharmacies comes it's going to be you know it's a debatable uh, subject which uh, you know uh, we can keep it for next uh, some other time so what patients they do basically they you know they want everything at their convenience and what the local pharmacies they are doing they are delivering to the pharmacies once they upload their prescriptions to you know their websites so now patients want the type of convenience and also what big pharmaceutical companies they have done previously when the viagra was launched which was used for erectile dysfunction many patients they were finding it very difficult to go to a pharmacy and buy this medicine because you know it's a, it's a sort of a social stigma then when the pfizer realized then what they did so then uh, they started requesting they came out with a app when which patient can upload uh, the you know prescription and patients can uh, you know uh, the pharmacies will deliver the drug into the uh, patients home at their convenience then the value hunting comparison of medicines it's very unfortunate everyone uh, wants a discount on medicine they go to a shopping mall they never ask discount on pizza they don't discount on uh, you know the burger they don't discount uh, on a their branded uh, clothing but they want discount on schemes bonuses on you know the pharmacies you know the medicines so patient wants you know the discounts so because affordability complexity and cost are the greatest challenges patients are facing today when it comes to spending on their medications excuse me let me just drink some water so have every stakeholder now is better equipped and attached to social media and we need to harness to take advantage of it what a pharma company can do so it's called as a social pharma as we discussed on the you know basically the different stakeholders so we have to connect and engage all the stakeholders how do pharma companies connect there are many social opportunities for pharmaceutical companies to connect with all the stakeholders and as i said we are, we have a different stakeholders from patient media hospital specialist pharmacist insurer so we engage them in clinical trials we can recruit patients for clinical trials recruit doctors for clinical trials recruit pharmacists for clinical trials engaging with the healthcare providers raising awareness so we can recruit you know the patients for raising awareness like today is you know a no no smoking day when which we can uh, take the people who are smokers you know who quit smoke and we have a quality of life they can be a ambassador they create awareness on quitting the smoking on benefits of smoking monitoring product safety so this is called also pms phase uh, phase four trials personalized uh, health solutions and also accessing to the real world data so with all these things so we can connect and engage all the stakeholders who are involved in our business so who owns this engagement in a pharmaceutical company in a pharmaceutical company so it is a brand team communication team external creative agency and medical information and information technology so these are the people basically they owns this engagement to the patient so i think uh, we have talked on uh, three areas one is on a smartphone internet social media good and bad of social media pharmaceutical uh, industry with respect to the market marketing and he patient and also Uh, you know how we can connect and engage the e patient and all, also stakeholders so now let's get into we have another 15 minutes i'm sure you know i'm able to uh, connect all of you uh, throughout this uh, session and this is very important with respect to you guys the pharmacists how you are going to use social media effectively so this is my with experience you know as i said from a era of non internet non smartphone non social media 
to the era i have traveled this journey of 24 years and i have seen you know how personally i have used social media effectively efficiently to make me more competent in my work have we ever searched about the industry we are in it's a question to all of us i'm sure you must have searched yes it's great if not please you should try once what are the areas that you all search for it's very interesting right not only posting uh, you know the uh, content to videos you know the movies uh, songs sports but beyond that yes because you are going to build your career you must be in a d farm or a b farm or a m farm or a farm d or a phd so it is very important for you to understand this presenting the other side of the coin in social media so linkedin linkedin is very important so because linkedin strengthens your professional network and scope for career making so you know the linkedin is a platform which is available if not if you are not there go ahead and immediately register on linkedin facebook improving interpersonal relationships which i'll be talking on each platform in the next slide so you all use must be using facebook i don't need to preach about facebook e journals online courses because knowledge upgradation is very important and you know multidisciplinary because you are studying various subjects from <clears throat> you know uh, pharmaceutics pharmaceutical chemistry pharmaceutical analysis pharmacology you know the marketing uh, then accountancy and management so you are studying various subjects so it is very important to understand the multidisciplinary knowledge to e journals and online courses e volunteers real time experience uh, you know experience you know you also must be volunteering for the cause for the social service or the professional service on blogs so i don't know how many of you are may earning money while uh, learning using blogs they also serve as a you know society for betterment and exclusive pages of course so you have you get current uh, industry updates on various pages so you are all in college as i said maybe you must be studying d farm you must be studying b farm uh, you must be studying m farm farm d and phd and also like part time you must be studying some other courses so you are in a college what you do you come to college you know uh, you come to college you live in college of course uh, you do you cannot rag in a, you cannot rag in college now so but you come to college to study right to study and to get a graduation how do you study how do you get a graduation through exams you know how you get an exam so you study you know you must be undergoing with a semester scheme where you have an annual scheme where you have internals followed by you know the theory exam and the practical exam then after the exams what you do so then after the exams enjoy vacation you know enjoy vacation but you go to vacation to home with the expectation of celebrating but unfortunately you end up you know this is the reality it's on a lighter side so then what is important i'm going to talk very important topic to sum up is the internship so my dear pharmacist friends so you have two levels of internship one is a mandate internship so internship basically for personal growth training development mentor skill and also voluntary internship so what do you get out of internship you get a better career perspectives because apart from a knowledge you also get a skill you also get a you know the contacts so i'm going to talk on this in detail so why we sh you should intern why you should intern i still have 10 more minutes i might extend for another 5 more minutes if i am not able to complete so because internship is a book to real world applying the knowledge from classroom to real world experience is possible through internship so though we have you know very limited uh, basically while i did my m farm b farm i had uh, the under i underwent two industrial trainings two 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 industrial uh, two industrial trainings so but those days you know we were not having opportunities we were not having those resources so but for you guys you have a lot of opportunities and resources so gain experience and increase marketability not only does this give you know an individuals an edge over other candidates when applying for jobs it also prepares you for what to expect in the field in your field and increases confidence in your work so this is very important aspect then networking there is one in 16 chance of securing a job by 
connecting with the people so just going with the internet uh, you know the uh, internship you are in you know the networking capability increases then you also figure out what you like and don't like see what happens uh, so my, take my example after b farm immediately why after the exam i was employed but i was not knowing you know what is right what i like you know where i am work so immediately after b farm i joined as a medical representative but uh, i was uh, very you know confused i wanted to do an m farm but i thought okay let me get into a job i just got into a job as a medical rep my i completed my exam in april so um, march uh, not uh, april may 15th then i was employed on april 16th i joined as a medical rep uh, in a headquarter called downgeri i i worked with a company called uh, you know uh, glad global alliance and technologies which was a division of crosstance now it uh, crosstance was acquired by ranbax you now ranbax is a sun pharma where i had an opportunity to launch one of the multinational companies so called uh, leo and big gold leo from denmark and big gold and from uh, germany so we launched these products in india so then basically i because we were not having any intern opportunities many intern opportunities because of you know the lack of resources so then they, they just i joined then after 6 months i realized okay i quit the job so because i felt i wanted to do an mpharm but here what will happen with an intern with a different intern you get an opportunity to experience a job then you understand what you like and where you belong and what you are really passionate so now after that then i got into mpharm then after mpharm i went into industry I worked in 2 uh, years it was not a choice it was a chance because of my personal and you know financial obligations then i went to gulf from there i worked as a pharmacist 3 years again i moved to sales and business development then i realized sales is a job which i really enjoy then i continued sales and marketing but i had to spend 6 7 years so th- this is what you know very interesting article figuring out what type of job you don't want while you are interning can help prevent from you accepting an ill fitting job when you are uh, graduating so with very important you take up any internship the you know internship that you come across then also it helps you in building your resume most of the organizations and jobs that you apply of following graduation and want employees to have some sort of a professional experience so then professionalism 57% of the people rated soft skills as being more important than technical skills so this is that is the reason you guys should use social media and start interning now itself so sir, the internship strengthens your professional network scope for career uh, making i'm uh, taking you with some of the examples some you know i have just put forward uh, like uh, case studies so ram is a student from final year b farm he is very good in academics he attempted his test unsure about getting internship in good organization how you can get into internship through social media start searching online options so what he does ram has created a linkedin profile and uploaded his resume few replies he received he started interacting improved his network you just follow you know every step it's with a real time experience i have put these examples few suggestions on resume was given opportunity to learn started viewing profiles of people who saw his profile and by looking at the profiles he started learning how to profile and self positioning see positioning yourself is very important your profile and position is very important to get attracted on social media so that someone will hire you as an intern and an employee so he got an opportunity to internship in a very well reputed organization though then he started upgraded his knowledge using his internship now as a responsibility pharmacist how a social media can help you in getting into a social service ram is a very close relative who is suffering from cancer he wished to gather information about cancer treating institutes nearby his stay then what he has done he has gone to his facebook account and he searched for a cancer community so you know was Uh, uh, uh you know uh, active center in the near uh, nearest place so it is called as a community so with the community then he was able to understand you know which is the nearest hospital uh, how many patients are there you know patients who are the survivors so then the treatment the cost the insurance and all those things he got through this then he posted his case in the community you know his relative's case and group members suggested with institutes and doctors treating the cases and he also improved interpersonal relationships with the doctors nearby pharmacies 
and also he got to know about the cancer in a practical way then apart from book he got to understand lot about cancer as i said now let's get into how we can learn things so i'm sorry akash is a pharmacy graduate he is also interested in digital marketing so he is also interested in biologics he want to know more updates on advancements of biologics being into a professional course you don't have any direct access to digital marketing because in student life you have limitations you know to get uh, direct access to the uh, companies so what he has done he identified an opportunity to learn online so that he wanted to upgrade himself so that he can get a provide the certification while studying a physical classes going to a university he on the go access from you see the advantage of online classes is it is on the go you know on the run with any device any place you can start learning then he got access to many free journals got to know latest advancements in biologics so then adding weightage to resume with additional online courses there are lot of online courses available uh, pharmacies like uh, you have udemy up to date so these are some of the online courses where they are real time very effective very short and very economical it is not even thousands it's in hundreds in fact i am learning many courses on udemy how to make you know uh, content writing the movie making you know sanskrit those lot of things are available on online so that's how you can uh, learn online then also so let's get into how you can upgrade your knowledge akash is a pharmacy graduate has gone through many journals so he has a sound knowledge on pharmacology just give me a minute so this is basically blog so <clears throat> with it with his interest he learnt marketing through online courses so blogging you all know that it's a very important very interesting area where blogging can make you earning you know earning a decent amount of money blogging can be you know social blogging professional blogging on sports and anything now in blogging as a affiliate marketing he started writing blogs and started earning his pocket money being blogging an open platform he got pros and cons to his blogs which again added to his networking so you can see like you know you can be a guest post maybe blogging your university can create a web page where you know you can ask students to blog you know their views on a particular subject uh, therapy or a disease or a subject so blogging makes you know while earning you can also learning so then also you get you know to know about advantages of the product as a pharmaceutical company basically they post lot of information on the product because this information is not available in a textbook see what you get from a textbook is a knowledge and when you get a real time information from a company it is a information with lot of concepts actually it is not only a information and knowledge with lot of concept which is important for a person who is going out from the university to know it so it is a web page of our uh, you know the company called atro biopharma i request all of you to uh, type atro biopharma on linkedin and uh, facebook you just go and like and you follow you get lot of information on marketing the digital marketing you know the pharma the cancer autoimmune disorders nephrology then also you know the biologics biosimilars and different markets you get lot of information on our website so basically Ravi is a pharmacy graduate, a job aspirant. He wished to update his knowledge because, as far this is applicable to students who are in the final year of their graduation, so you want to update your knowledge on the latest launches on a specific organization. Then you also want to understand. Suppose you want to get into, you know, a CDMA, clinical data management, uh, uh, clinical data and medical affairs area. So you get lot of information on the clinical trials, medical marketing, etc. so then these business pages act as a mini website with real time updates on launches and events an interactive platform unlike regular websites website is basically it's a one sided uh, thing you get only a fixed information whereas on this platform you get a very good information with a very quick uh, turnaround time then uh, web pages also helps for unique positioning of each organization that uh, we we position ourselves as a company reaching every needy patient globally means biosimilars are very complex very difficult very expensive products to make and biosimilars are used in treating a very complex disorders like cancer autoimmune disorder anemia 
and many other uh, diseases and disorders. So what uh, basically we are positioning, we are reaching every needy patient globally. How? Making them affordable, available and accessible with a 3M model. So these web pages helps for unique positioning of each organization like what we are doing and also enlightens and brand availability across the globe. With single page, we can reach millions of you know, stakeholders across the globe. So having understood all these things, I took another five minutes extra. So thanks for accommodating that. Having understood all these things, so on uh, social media, in your lives. So I would like to quickly take you through some of the take home points that you know you should take home after this presentation. So my dear pharmacists, mobile phone has become an extended organ. And internet and social media is an integrated part of human being. So do not forget that we have to live with that. Maybe your parents, your siblings, your teachers, maybe telling that, you know, okay, they're cautioning you're spending a lot of time on internet. Please do not forget, you, if you want to have a very good professional career, professional growth, use social media, your smartphone for a professional purpose. I'm sure, you know, you have to use it for social purpose because, you know, most of us, especially in the era of Corona, we are sitting at home. This is the way we are killing time, you know, spending time on social media. But do not forget, if you have a good professional career, you have also have a good personal life and a social life. With scope of seeing everything in our palm, just one palm, we humans are exploiting the internet best possible ways and means also. And sometimes we are also abusing it in a worst possible way. Everyone is active on our internet, but you have to decide whether you want to be on a constructive side or a destructive side. Do not use internet to harm someone. Do not use internet to you know, bully someone. Do not you know, demean someone on the internet. You know, be wise while you are using the internet. Right way of using internet has bought fame and name to people, organizations and industry. You have seen how you know, people are become, make you know, their own brand. They become you know, presidents, prime ministers, chief ministers and also how the big companies you know from like facebook which is one of the highest valued company in the world how they are built you know just be using social media so it hold equally good for pharmaceutical industry the transition of long waiting in queue to era of e patients i think you have learned about era e patient so next time so you can use this platform when you know any of your family members or friends are uh, you know they want to go to the clinic and pharmacy Transition of medical stores into e-pharmacy, as I said, it's a debatable uh, topic in India. As a new entrance in the industry, we, uh, the, you at a student level, know how, when, where, and what to use on social media. Being into conventional educational system, we don't have any separate subject on internet usage, especially in pharmacy, but self-explore can help us in creating a better future. Synergy of professional knowledge and technology can make an individual family, community, and country, and the world a safer place to survive and to live and to grow. So these are some of the points that you know, I feel that you have to take from this presentation. As I said, it's a very lengthy topic, very vast uh, subject. So I think uh, one and a half hour, one hour 30 minutes is what, uh, like, you know, after uh, the introduction session I have taken, I had requested uh, uh, to your management that I need one and a half hour so that I can uh, do justice to this topic. And uh, with this presentation, I was able to convey what I understood about, you know, uh, you know the social media and uh, how we can implement social media in, uh, you know, uh, pharmaceutical marketing and how social media can be effectively used by all the pharmacists to constructively grow in their professional careers. So with this, I would like to thank, you know, we, <clears throat> Aditya Bangalore Pharmaceutical Institute of Educational Research for giving this opportunity to share my experience to all the future pharmacists. And also, I would like to thank each one of you for listening to me very patiently. Though, you know, at times uh, it is a boring subject, but I've tried my level best to keep it active and, you know, keep you engaged in uh, this topic. And uh, the corona is going to be, COVID-19 is going to be the new norm and digital technologies are going to be the new norms in our lives. 
so please use your time wisely on internet and social media and build you know learn it is a time for you to learn there are a lot of resources available online which we were not having those days and learn by learning try to earn using you know lot of ways good ways not the bad ways and uh, try to intern yourself you know there are a lot of resources available while you know uh, studying you can do a internship online internship especially during the vacations and uh, develop your uh, professional you know the resumes very effectively so that they are very attractive to the hiring companies or the pharmaceutical companies and pharma pharmaceutical industry is doing a great job in you know researching manufacturing vaccines medicines to treat covid 19 and proud to be part of this pharmaceutical industry and today india is considered as a pharmacy to the world so as of now when you look at the entire world one of the stable industry is pharmaceutical industry so pharmaceutical industry offers a huge opportunities gambit of op <coughs> opportunities to all the pharmacists and the life science graduates from you know quality control quality assurance regulatory affairs you know the pharmacovigilance the clinical affairs medical marketing marketing product management business development strategic marketing then uh, uh, you know the uh, manufacturing quality assurance supply chain sales marketing business development so it's just uh, our industry is very huge and we all are in very 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 passionate industry we work with the high level of compassion so to treat the patients suffering from various diseases and disorders so with this uh, with this note once again i wish you all the very best for your careers for your exams and for your studies thank you very much now if you have enough time i am ready to take any questions from all the participants i'll be more than happy to interact with all of you thank you that was a quite informative and uh, enlightening uh, session sir a uh, few people have raised their hands for the questions and uh, some people have asked their questions uh, i can uh, read you for that uh, you can answer and a few of them have raised their hand i'll let them speak to you yeah better uh, you can keep it open so i think uh, if they have time you know i'm available here yes sir okay sir so first question is like how to help uh, how this uh, topic helps in research like how uh, social media helps in research was the first question asked in the session let me drink water research yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can understand sir research one is and a half hour of uh, yeah. speech uh, need a two minute break at least yeah research anyway see my job is only speaking right i am in yes. sales and marketing business development yes sir. my asset is just vak chaturya it is it is just speaking you know speaking yes. you know that, that is what is required for sales so it's, it's a good question uh, so let me just uh, yeah so may know the person uh, who is asked the question uh, prakash uh, the body sir he has yeah. uh, quoted this question have this uh, topic is uh, you know like it will help in research yeah okay so prakash from your college or uh, industry expert or uh, uh, sir didn't mention anything sir okay okay no problem yeah. if prakash is online so prakash it's, it's there is a huge huge scope to do research on social media so i can guide you because my research my phd research is in digital marketing so with focus on social media in pharmaceutical industry see you you can uh, take my number you can my take number and you can uh, personally connect to me in case if you are a phd student i would recommend you to take a research on social media if you are a graduate or a post graduate if you want to conduct a research on social media so please it's a area because as i said post corona most of the things we are going digital our life is going digital work from home is going to be the new norm have you ever imagined today we are all connected on social media i think that's enough you know there is a huge scope for doing a research in this area i can guide you i'll be more than happy to guide you 
sir uh, a few people have raised their hands and i'm uh, allowing them to talk to you directly so that they yeah. can ask their questions or queries yeah please uh, please madam yeah uh, so shrinivas chintala sir shrinivas yeah. chintala sir yeah you can speak to the speaker sir they are not talking sir yeah i think i love them to talk yeah there is uh, mr mohammad moza mohammad uh, he is allowing you can allow him he is uh, raising his hand you can allow you can uh, keep it open so that maybe people you know especially students they have lot of inhibitions yes sir Nancy L. Nancy L. So you have to unmute, madam. You have to unmute. Yes, sir. You have to unmute all. You give access to all. Sir, uh, all at a time. If they talk, uh, it will be problematic, sir. So I am loving only the people who has raised their hand. Yeah, yeah. You can you can unmute Nancy, and you can yes, ask sir. Nancy unmute to unmute. Her. Nancy, you have to unmute. Yes, sir. so what we'll do we can take the questions which are already you know uh, mentioned yes, here sir. that's better bharati miss bharati am i audible to you yes yes bharati you are audible uh, uh, it is quite an interesting session uh, uh, probably this is one of the most interesting session till now that i have attended because we have been attending the series of webinars so with that i just wanted to know like there there's a lot of uh, you know there there are a lot of people who writes Uh, you know content on social media you know instagram or facebook or whatever so can we write content on uh, you know uh, something related to pharmacy medicine uh, can we do that you know uh, probably uh, giving an information about the medicines what to take at how to take and all that's yes, my madam. yeah uh, uh, bharati can you just introduce yourself so that you know i can uh, depends on you I work as an assistant professor in Aditya Institute. Okay, okay. Yeah, madam. I see. Uh, there are two things. Uh, so, uh, as I said, the blogging. So, in fact, I'm a avid blogger on uh, social media. Uh, so, especially on Facebook and LinkedIn. So, we we have uh, different uh, topics. So, let's say, I cannot write too much uh, medical uh, medical content about a drug. Let's say we we market. Uh, uh biosimilars uh, like dobepotent rituximab bevacizumab and uh, uh, trust like uh, adalimab and trastuzumab uh, so what we can do uh, on social media basically we try to create a image of a company image you know it's a quality image okay we talk about you know our uh, approvals our uh, quality like our infrastructure our r&d capabilities manufacturing capabilities our market reach so what is the purpose first of all you have to understand exactly what is your target audience you want to blog and what is the purpose so for us as a pharmaceutical company as i said since we are in a regulated profession where we are not supposed to write too much about drug to the public directly whereas the information is available on data i think you have seen anything that uh, lbl that we give to the doctors there are also lot of information we have to in many countries you want to give a lbl that content will be vetted and approved through a regulatory agency means any information about a drug whether it is a pharmacology whether it is a chemical its side effect we have to take prior approval to a regulatory agency even to put it in a pack insert in a pack so now coming to social media so we can talk on three areas one is as i said the brand building second one is quality perception third one is basically to give a confidence to your customers like you know your customer doctor and end user that yes i am prescribing a good product which is a quality product and second for a pharmacist also he wants to tell on not sell like you know otx products so that pharmacist also will feel a confident 
and the, even the patient since this patient uh, he goes online and he gets lot of information patient have a lot of curiosity for a product that he is using he wants to know the history of that product where it is made where it is uh, you know sold all those information we can sell you know we can put it on the uh, uh, social media social media whether it is on linkedin or instagram or twitter or facebook or our product websites so this is the maximum information that we can share on social media okay so thank you thank you so much You're welcome madam uh yeah. natraj shetty v mr natraj shetty I've unmuted, sir. Sir is uh, not unmuting himself, all do. Okay, okay, okay. We have a couple of questions in the main while we can take. Yeah. Yeah, I think Prakash the body question I have taken. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, um, uh, honestly, Akashi, thank you, sir, for nice lovely presentation. How can I get the certificate? I think that you have to take. Mm, this is an informative session, and I'll do. Uh, what is this? Yeah, that that I'll uh, forward it to you, sir. what is the scope of pharmacy on forensic department yes sir yeah so see it depends you know forensic department not all will take forensic department as a profession so uh, i think uh, there are couple of people who are raising in the meantime they can join uh, see i uh, uh, mr uh, uh, purushottam prakash uh, heralge has asked this question yes sir yes see forensic pharmacy also uh, there is a scope because of lot of genetic uh, things are happening in you know the uh, genetic research is happening in the uh, healthcare industry so again it is a very specific so very few people they will have the forensic department but since i do not have much experience in you know handling forensic department i can talk a general it is a very much individual choice so that if they want more information i think it is better they can consult you know who are having experience in forensic area so it's very interesting mr purushottam it's a very interesting profession and you 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 are thinking something different i wish you all the best yeah there is a question from anonymous attendee give yes. some insights on how to reach doctors via social media for marketing so doctors so see basically you have to create a web page you know we have to create a web page of your company and you have to you are fill post they have to request doctors to follow your web page so then the doctors will automatically they will be receiving all the posts blogs everything gone to their i know the account so that you know doctors will basically uh, get all the information so i'm not getting in a oh, okay option for on mute dipti uh, ma'am how do we create a blogs so see blogs as i said i can send a link you know how to create a blogs so to purushottam purushottam can directly contact me can a pharmacist advertise a product medicine or pharmaceutical products so walter james of aditya college yeah so pharmacist cannot uh, advertise a product see as i said a pharmaceutical product is classified into three categories one is a narcotic which is very having a lot of restrictions second one is basically a prescription product third one is a otc product so first two categories we cannot advertise you know pharmaceutical companies cannot advertise product to the public through you know print or electronic media whereas otc products can be uh, uh, <clears throat> even otc products are having a health benefits they have a th therapeutic benefits but still they can do advertisement because they do not have you know uh, uh, limitations they do not have a wider side effect portfolio so that you know they can uh, promote these products through print and uh, you know the uh, audio uh, i'm sorry both print and uh, video mode so i am a registered pharmacist uh, working in quality assurance department in sterile gene in puducherry 
that got deleted i'm sorry okay the, i have answered all the questions from the chat box so now i am ready to take questions online so i would write uh, i would like to read the question i am a registered pharmacist working in quality assurance department in sterile gene in puducherry yeah a uh, future how can i start the pharmaceutical business also like a medical shop nowadays online medical business are growing one that was the question okay <clears throat> see the, the maybe i think uh, the candidate is working in uh, industry quality assurance they want to shift to a community pharmacist and from there e pharmacy see yes. starting a pharmacy well, you need to have a good place uh, you know with a good population that is first thing location should be good with a lot of population uh, with a floating population if you have a floating population you don't need to depend on uh, a specific doctor or a hospital polyclinic or a nursing home so uh, then uh, for that you need to have a resources so uh, the first resource is uh, to have a license so i'm sure being a pharmacist you already have a license second one you need to have a good building so uh, uh, a place you know as i said the place it is called as a five p's so place so then uh, third one is uh, basically you need to have that uh, uh, a courage a passion to serve the patient right so many people they do not see community hospital pharmacist in a good light uh, very unfortunate very unfortunate in india whereas uh, a uh, community and a community hospital clinical pharmacist in us europe or any any country outside india is used as a very noble profession very very competitive profession and very you know uh, lucrative profession unfortunately in india the pharmacy department you know the uh, indian pharmacy council uh, so they have to come out with some sort of regulations when which to have some sort of again you know these are my personal opinion traveling in so many countries so it's very good that you know you have chosen the community pharmacist sooner or later in india community pharmacist is going to gain its its glory is just a matter of time so you need to have resources resources means as i said you know the place building the license and the money to have and more than anything is a passion <coughs> passion to serve your patient and also your confidence you know because in india community pharmacist is not in the scene in, as a very great profession you know compared to other uh, professions so we have an anonymous attendee <laughs> yeah uh, so we are sent it like first of all thanks for your wonderful session sir i yeah. just wanted to know how do we really think it's a better scope of uh, social media in pharmacy yeah see better scope i think uh, one is that you <laughs> have to decide you, you are the decision maker you have to decide exactly where what you want to position so if you are an entrepreneur if you are having a community pharmacy so then you can create a blog about your pharmacy so then you connect all your patients all the stakeholders whether it is your patients doctors so then you you keep you know updating what is what are the services which are available by a retail pharmacy you know that is one area suppose you are a person you are a student so i've already given enough you know the uh, areas where you can develop yourself to become a very good sellable product to the pharmaceutical industry yourself yourself you have to create a brand you have to create a brand you have to become a good intern uh, you have to develop your resume you have to have a very good networking in uh, on yeah. linkedin so you can use your and So I hope I have answered the you know uh, to this question. Uh, yes, sir. And then uh, we have one more question. Yeah. Uh, like, um, sir, uh, it is from Mr. Manoj Kumar. Sir, kindly suggest what kind of biosimilar topics are read by both patients and doctors online. What platform works best for the pharma pharmacy company? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got yes. it. See, for biosimilars. So basically, uh, what we are doing, I will share. I think uh, uh, again, you know, each company has a different strategy. So basically, we want to engage uh, both patients and the prescribers and pharmacists. Like, right? you know, these are the three key shareholders in our business. 
so for patients so our, we use i think i feel social uh, out of social media so uh, uh, facebook is one of the best platform because across the world because i handle overseas business so throughout the world facebook is used maximum i think you also have seen the statistics you know the highest uh, you know the social media platform is like the highest number of users uh, on social media is uh, facebook on facebook then you can have you know your product page you can have your company page so when which you can connect your patients for patients you can create lot of awareness so by as i said biosin base are used in treating uh, the disease like you know the diseases like cancer and autoimmune disorders where you can create a page dedicated for for a page for patients and patients can share their you know the experiences because cancer is a deadly disease so cancer is like next to death just before death in most of the cases where the survivors can share you know their experiences of undergoing with the treatment you know the using a specific medicine you no know, undergoing the treatment of a specific doctor a hospital or an institute so with this i think you know we will be spreading a very good message to all the patients who are suffering cancer so that is with respect to the patients coming to the doctors so doctors always wants a product which is highly effective and also affordable so doctors what information they are looking for so so that we can create a page for our company where you know we make uh, the doctors to follow our company and they get a periodic updates you know on about our company our you know the quality certificate our accredited gmp accreditations our approved global approvals you know number of patients on our drugs number of clinical trials so we can share a lot of information to the doctors on a real time basis so with this you know doctors get a lot of confidence on you know our products and on our company so on the coming to uh i mean to the pharmacies again you know doctors and pharmacies basically we share a similar page because the information that we provide to doctors and pharmacies will be different compared to the patients i think i would suggest the facebook is one of the best interactive platform where you can have your product page where you know and the company page and also we have linkedin basically that is basically to attract a very good talent to work with us and with facebook we can connect our you know the company website product website our youtubes and everything you know facebook is one of the best platform so far maybe in the future you know many might come but facebook is in a very advanced phase i hope you know i have answered the manoj's question yes sir and uh, the same anonymous attendee has uh, replied for your, uh, the answer like previously you just discussed about the patients like me through social media to know about their health through symptoms but there would be an impact in the people where they may suggest themselves for self medication can i know what is your view on this sir yeah uh, so it's it's very very good uh, question see self medication we are not going to you know recommend self medication so we are a responsible pharmaceutical company no doctor no pharmacist who are licensed they are not supposed to recommend a self medication self medication see the blogs that they have seen on that is basically they sharing the experiences so outside india when you go you do not get anything without prescription you need to have a prescription coming to india even in india there are lot of regulations so you you do not get everything on say you know online or everything over the counter you need to have a prescription even patient wants to have a self medication he has to consult patient has to consult doctor for the doctor then obtain a prescription then they have to go to pharmacy to buy all these medications so yes, self medication is uh, rampant in india but uh, it's it's uh, uh, the, i think uh, uh, the pci and uh, drug control departments they are curtailing it they are putting processes to you know bring down the self medication in india so but uh, see this is a double edged sword as i said uh, social media is a double edged sword there is both good side and bad side again i request everyone to you are all responsible pharmacists you know do not jump into conclusions with whatever is available on social media right i hope i answered the question yes sir so many are asking so in between the question i want to uh, tell them that uh, they'll re- uh, all the attendees will receive the e certificate to yes, the sir. registered mail within a week of time yeah and uh, 
and going for the next question uh, anusuya kashi so please uh, those who are having any queries please type it in the questions uh, questionnaire uh, question and answers uh, block provided so that it will be answered uh, then and there otherwise uh, like sir suggested if it is in detail you need you can contact sir and uh, anusuya kashi uh, she posted that uh, with so much of uh, social media is it possible that there is an information overload can you give us some tips for pharmacy business professionals to enhance or improve their visibility and uh, not get lost in the social media world very good question so uh, anusuya uh, so it's, it's a good question let me get into our real time uh, you know our uh, real life situation so i'm sure you know if you're working somewhere so you live in bangalore if i'm right so to reach office you know the traffic used to i'm from bangalore but i've left bangalore long ago in 99 i left it is close to 22 years i'm staying outside bangalore so early we used to have traffic but today you have overload on the road but your target is to reach office reach college reach your factory on time right so though there is a traffic overload on the road your target is to go to your work go to your college go to your university to end of the day our objective in life has to be very clear our purpose should be very you know focused i'm sure objective should be focused and our purpose should be very clear though there is lot of information available on the internet you should be you should search for what because you know you use search words you should uh, you, you there is a course which is available online how to use effective search words you can it is just you know uh, uh, seven days course you can go and you can uh, join there so with this proper search word you will get a exact focused information so because all companies they are working to reach the target audience who is looking for a specific information this is where a very you know uh, good social media user he gets the information that he wants in just a click of is the time so i would request be specific while searching you will get information that you are seeking like though there is a traffic your focus is to go to office so same way if you are focusing on some information though there is a traffic high traffic and high uh, overloaded information on social media you can reach the target topic and uh, uh, someone was asking anonymous attendee regarding internship uh, for students at this junction covid 19 see as i said there are lot of virtual companies you know who are working coming to pharmaceutical uh, domain i am sure this is with respect to pharmaceutical domain there are a lot of companies who wants interns to support them you know because so internship it is a two way it's a mutual cooperation it's beneficial to both for companies so they can offload some of their work to an intern for an intern at free cost with a limited time he get to know about a subject he gets he gain some knowledge he gain some skill he gain some expertise experience so everything is available online so you can approach a marketing companies who are working you know in different areas especially this time you know covid 19 most of the companies they are working virtually so in fact last two months we have been operating virtually so working from home for office or working from home only laptop or a phone is our life so we are operating our businesses in more than 100 countries throughout the world just using laptop smartphone and internet and a social media platform during covid 19 yes there are companies who are looking for interns who want to get the work done who want to share their you know work with the internship so if, if you are specific then i can recommend they can be in touch with them and uh, i hope i have answered that question yes sir so with this uh, i would like to uh, wind up the session with a thanking note uh, it was a quite informative and uh, enlightening session sir for all of us uh, now uh, i would like to thank uh, dr av jaypal reddy sir uh, for giving us uh, an enlightenment on the uh, topic 
and i thank all the respectable attendees uh, teachers students uh, industrial people and others who have registered for this webinar session and uh, last but not the least i would like to thank uh, chairman uh, dr b a vishwanath sir uh, for uh, aditya bangalore uh, institute for pharmacy education and research for giving me the opportunity to conduct this webinar and uh, you know encouraging our teachers and uh, uh, and a specific note my heart felt thanks for uh, all the abipo team my teachers students and the it department uh, for supporting me for this uh, webinar and uh, with you guys uh, it would not have been uh, possible at all so thanks for support uh, what you have given and uh, with your support we would like to give few more sessions interesting sessions for you guys so keep updated uh, with us and encourage us uh, like this so with this i would like to end up this session uh, thank you sir thank you for uh, being there with us and all the attendees uh, for their uh, you know like uh, interest in uh, uh, the topic and question session it all uh, went good i think we would like to know how the session went by from you guys thank you thank you namaste take care stay safe you, stay, you know stay healthy thank you sir bye bye